everybody. This is Dario Hunt from Living Life Fearless. Welcome back to another Music Files podcast. Today's date is November 1st, 2018. With me as always is my co-host, Mr. Reese Walker. Say what up to everybody. What's good, everybody? Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. This is another episode of the Music Files, and we have a special guest with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, sir? Yo, yo. This is Jaron Lamar Davis. I'm right back. Uh, I was with you guys, I believe, late January or February of last year. Um, or this year, this year. sorry. We're, we're family, so it's yeah. good to be back. Yeah, yeah. welcome he's... back, man. So for those who didn't know, he's a drummer, and uh, he was on a previous podcast, so make sure you you know go back in the files and, and check out I believe he was our first before. special guest on any of our podcasts. Yes, that's yeah, right. So I'm excited. I'm excited a lot. A lot seems like first, it's changed uh, since then. So, yeah, uh, our numbers are way up since then. So we'll be speaking to a lot more people. Yeah, man. Everything's on the up and up. That's how it should be growing. Mm-hmm. So, so I mean, we're just going to talk about you know a lot of things that have been going on in music. Uh, going to do a little different formatting today. I'm going to start with some news, then we're going to talk about your stuff, and I'm going to come back with like one more item, and then we're going to go into some deep dive topics. Yes, sir. So, right off the back, I want to just talk about Spotify. I don't know if you've heard about the new rulings that, the new rules that they're putting in place. It's a bunch of different stuff. Um, yeah. They got the upload button. They are now letting artists directly upload to their to the platform, not just labels. Yeah. Which, yeah, that's if I'm not mistaken. Um, when when did they put that that rule into place? I don't know if it's in effect as of yet, but they have definitely announced. I think it's in beta right now, um, but they have definitely announced that it's an upcoming feature. It will allow independent artists to upload their music directly to the platform instead of a label or aggregator. And they're saying the company will offer 50% of the revenue with the artists for the songs they upload. So, yes. Well, I guess that could be better than what it's been. Um, I mean, that's interesting, but I know the royalties for it is something like what? 0.0001 cent or something. Probably like that. even less than that. But yeah. 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 So. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, my stuff's on there. Of course, I, being an indie artist, I went through uh, for this first project through CD Baby. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I guess anytime you can gain a little more control if you're an indie artist, that's a good thing. Um, these labels, man, they're they're in trouble. I mean, I don't know yeah. necessarily about, about how if this is good or bad for the Spotify thing. And I'm actually for my upcoming project, I'm potentially shopping around, maybe getting with the label. So. Mm. Uh, but this is interesting. I'm going to have to do some more researching on this one. What, what, what's y'all's thoughts on that? Oh, man. It's interesting. It's weird. Because, uh, like you said, about the royalty st- situation, it leaves a lot for the average indie artist to not gain, except for exposure, whereas say, like, a Chance the Rapper indie artist or just, like, somebody more well-known that isn't tied down to a label, it it's going to allow them to do deals directly with Spotify. And yep. um, essentially, Spotify will be the label. Spotify is the label. So yeah, so like that's so that's why I'm like I don't I don't know how that I feel about that. Like I don't know, that's kind of weird. It's like they were already kind of doing that with the, like the exclusive album release deals and stuff. Right. Um so for me it just looks like they're kind of trying to like take the Netflix approach with original content and pay mm-hmm. artists, you know, other pe- except they're gonna like let independents have their their spot. I don't know how the platform like interface is gonna work out. You know, I don't know if it's gonna be, you know, like how easy is it gonna be to find all these new individuals? And and you right. know, it's just it's complicated. It sounds like a complicated mm-hmm. thing that I'm sure they worked out, but I'm just interested to see how the platform handles this rollout. You know, right, like, right. 
is this going to cut off people that are already uh, with labels like artists um, similar like with Netflix mm-hmm. although Netflix is kind of controlling their own destiny there's certain things that you can't get on Netflix because of that so right. I'm wondering if Spotify like I was looking up there's a couple of jazz artists um, I was wanting to check out their albums a couple of weeks ago and I realized that mm-hmm. They didn't have stuff on Spotify, but I think some of that um, for, on on their part is by choice because they kind of they're European. They like people to go directly to them and purchase, mm-hmm. um, you know, music instead of just being able to stream it for free. Um, yeah. But this is this is interesting, man. This is, you know, yeah, it's it, interesting because the flat rates, um, Apple Music, you know, pays more for to artists in terms of streams but like not that much more you know it's still fractions but um, at the same i mean yeah, from my from, from my perspective from a non-musician's perspective from coming from more business side it makes sense for them to do this because they don't have to pay labels the 55 you know percent they're already paying them they can basically pay artists less money for them to upload directly and you know who knows? They can get an artist that can just blow up like like they do on SoundCloud uh, mm-hmm. overnight, mm-hmm. and not have to worry about paying the labels and dealing with the labels' issues. And they'll mm-hmm. still be paying out a lot less in the long run. The artists will be making more, but they'll be paying out less to mm-hmm. the artist than they would to the label. Right. And then on top of that, they'll be kind of cutting out one of their biggest competitors in the space, which is SoundCloud. Because this is why SoundCloud is so popular with a lot of these artists is because they don't have to have a label. They don't have to have like these aggregate groups to have their stuff be found or uploaded. So if you can just do this on Spotify, that's going to put even more pressure on SoundCloud to like kind of come up with something else. And they've already kind of been struggling on the money front. So, well, that's because they don't have the download button. Exactly. So it's just, it's just extremely smart. (laughs) They have the upload now, but yeah, they don't have the download. If See, we could, I, if we could buy music from them and and store it on my phone without the platform, like if I delete Spotify and I could actually still have the music I bought through Spotify, they'd make money. But you know, right, right. Well, they just turned the profits for the first man. time ever. Yeah, man. I mean, that's interesting because, like, I I have a uh, business background too. So, I mean, I I agree with everything that uh, that you're saying, Dario, too. But then the artist in me makes me think about like kind of like what we talked about um, in the last podcast. And it seems like we always come back to when you're doing a comparison or of quality music. Um, Mm -hmm. It seems like they're dumbing down their product, just like everything else in the millennial culture in order to get more people. So they'll make more money. But now I'm concerned about like bedroom Johnny Mm -hmm. that just, you know, I just recorded this in my bedroom with this terrible software, but now I can upload my stuff directly to Spotify without... Okay, so hey, so uploading yeah. is that yes, you can upload, but they it still goes through like a a, a curation process. like screening process oh, okay. before it actually gets put into okay, it. Good. Like you can upload it for editorial consideration, yeah. you know, for the editorial playlist, but it doesn't necessarily mean that everything get, that you upload is going to get thrown on there. So they still do yeah, some sort sense. of quality like, control. How can they like just curation? Monetize? the stream no no it's not completely open things you know it would have to be some some kind of clearances there's still some screening there's still some you know some curation there's some checks and balances before Uh music actually get gets out there but i mean you're right there is gonna be i mean we've already seen it there is the quality of the music is going to take a hit and it's been taking a hit for the past you know whatever i wouldn't say the quality it's just the 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 overwhelming quantity of music that's out there the high quality stuff is a lot less because the pond is so big you know when the mm-hmm. pond is so much smaller and when it's so much harder to get into you had to be kind of quality like yeah they had some gimmicks in there but it was far less than it was the quality but now it's like the gate is wide open anybody can hop in there so so like everything is flooded you don't lose the quality but it's just spread out so much more and it's so much harder to find in the forest basically but Hmm. that's kind of the cost with it like you get more eyes but at the same time you get more people you know so yeah so now it's a matter of two then how how um intricate is that curation screening process going to be because is it is it going to be something where it's as strict as a pandora per se where they're just like even if the music's good they're like hey we don't have a need for this now 
Um, uh, if that's the case, then uh, having a label may be more beneficial because it gives you that clout kind of. Um, the label definitely helps. Um, you know, they are known. Uh-huh. They're like a respected name. Respect, like they respect. You know what their opinion about music is. So obviously that's going to help. Mm-hmm. But I think for like like he was saying for like independent artists to have kind of already established themselves, like Chance, mm-hmm. well, Chance the rapper, independent. Mm-hmm. Like for people like that, <laughs> like that's really going to help them out so much because then they don't have to do these deals with anybody else. They can just exactly. do it completely with Spotify, and you don't have to be mm-hmm. like Taylor Swift or like whatever these massive mega stars to do it. You can still be a mm-hmm. a well known commodity and and still mm-hmm. have that have that luxury of somebody with a big name like that. So mm-hmm. I'm mean, just gonna be it's interesting. Modern day capitalism. I like it. I like it. And for if you're a big name independent artist, because now you can control your control own everything. destiny. You can do your own negotiations they and see, your own contracts. They said you control uh, like you get 100 yeah. percent of the royalties and you get like 50 percent of the payout or whatever the revenue. Yeah. Yeah. The, this is <clears throat> pretty much just opened up partnership deals with yes. They're, services. they're just trying to replace the labels, basically. My 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 curiosity is going to be how the labels respond to this more so mm-hmm. than you know are they going to mm-hmm. start pulling people from their platform because they're like trying to basically nudge them out of the way and just kind of cut out the middleman. So I want to see yeah, how, well. you know are they going to start excluding certain big name artists from there? Like no fuck you guys. You can't have that on him, you know. I'm kind of surprised that like Universal doesn't have its own streaming service. I mean, Spotify is was a wasn't a conglomerate of a lot of record labels and record labels X. Yeah, yeah, everyone invested in it, uh, but a lot of people pulled out. So, mm. I don't know who's still like Yeah, I'm not sure exactly who's Spotify. still behind the scenes, but yeah, I mean it's hard. It's hard to make a streaming <laughs> streaming service and make it profitable. Ask Jay Z. Ask you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah you yes. got the most popular names: the Jay, Beyonce, like Kanye, trying to push a, and they still struggle. Yeah, like, but, but we're acting like thing. it's not. It's not working though. I mean, like just because like Jay Z turned that company like he quadrupled its worth in you know like two years like you know yeah but like they're still in a far far they're still far far behind spotify oh way and far Apple behind Music now. in the whole game but universal as a conglomerate has way more artists like if they yeah if they i mean for sure they could services i mean harder it they could they could push back they, they could, could push they definitely could i mean you could you see it you see it in tv i mean you see yeah. uh disney they're doing their own streaming service now uh Bro, all, Disney's it, all these individual all these individual channels and cable networks are starting to do their own streaming services cbs is doing one like they're just everybody's kind of pushing back on netflix and you know yeah. not gonna just let you have a monopoly on everything so yeah i mean I, I could definitely see labels trying to do it but it's harder with music because Music is so much cheaper to make. Like artists mm-hmm. can come from anywhere. Like TV, you have to go mm-hmm. through these people. You know, to have a show mm-hmm. produced, you have to oh, go yeah. through these networks. And now with music, with everything, you don't have to go through them. Yeah. So it could happen. It's just I just I just don't see it going to to the extreme that TV streaming is going right now. Mm. We have HBO Go, Showtime, uh, you know what I'm saying? CBS, <coughs> ABC, Disney, like Hulu. Like it's it's almost too much. Yeah, it's a lot going on, and most of us mm-hmm. we only use. Like I have my my certain favorites, uh, of course, on the TV. I <coughs> have all stick. these apps. I only use the same ones. I don't. I don't really use right. Hulu. I use Netflix, and you know, for somebody else they may only use Hulu, and they don't use Netflix. So mm-hmm. it's all of these options, and it's Two becoming words. like a Pepsi Coke thing. Fire Stick. How would you say, Dario? Fire Stick. Two words. Fire Stick. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Then you can get it all. He's like, why choose? <laughs> I'm not saying I do it. Everybody out there listening, but I'm just saying just I, hear it's, I hear it's great. Those. Yeah, I hear it's great. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. We got we got the uh, we got a new sponsor. <laughs> but I mean, before we get off this topic, I just kind of want to. I don't know. Since you are a musician and you go through this process, can you kind of tell us the process of getting your music on Spotify? Yeah, so that's and that that was one thing I was gonna bring up is for for me, 
Um, I've only been through the process twice now, and it's it was once when I released my single off of my album, and then when I did the uh, the entire album. So I went through um, CD Baby, which is a dis you know a, 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 um, distribution oh. outlet. Uh, so what happens is with them, and there's other ones too, but they're all pretty much the same. Cool. What happened for the indie artists is you basically you submit your information just to CD Baby, and then CD Baby disperses it everywhere, which is essentially it's nice um, because it's the same thing that a label or an indie label would do for you. Um, mm. No, but you collect all of your, you know, all of your money. So. Right. Um, now the drawback of course of that also is again, like, like we was talking about earlier, there's no, um, you know, not having that name by you. I mean, that that's what the labels can assist with, which makes it easier to get press. Um, you know, if you don't have a label, then the next step is trying to find a publicist or doing all of that work yourself. So it's a lot more groundwork on the back end that you have to do. Um, and that's what I was going to say about the Spotify. So if you have one artist per se, this is just one more extra hoop you have to try to jump through. Like for me with my album, I had CD Baby taking care of like Spotify and that type of thing. Um, mm -hmm. But even still, there was certain work that I had to do on the back end to um, quote unquote apply. So like Pandora, I had to individually, like personally submit music to them because CD Baby didn't do it. And, um, and I actually think with Spotify, I think I had to sign up <laughs> I think I still signed up for Spotify. Like they put your music on there, but then to go through the verification process, all of that stuff, you're still doing all of that. So maybe mm -hmm. it isn't one, an extra step. I need to actually go back and look at that. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, like I said, man, when y'all brought that up, I definitely need to be researching that because I need to be thinking about what it is I do want to do for my upcoming projects. Um, it may not be beneficial yeah even if I have labels coming at me to, to just sign away, especially knowing that the industry is constantly is turning towards the artists. I mean, that's, that's our generation in general. I mean, we're, mm -hmm. we're always capitalizing, you know, I mean, basketball is, is doing it. You know, you're seeing the Le'Veon Bell situation with Pittsburgh where people are concerned. We understand our value a little more mm -hmm. than, than maybe back in yeah, the day. Sure. Can't yeah. keep can't keep raping people for you know what they what they are yeah. so yeah right how is there no football player that's as rich as any football owner exactly <laughs> first of all why is there <laughs> no football player like owning a, a, a jordan of football you know what i'm saying like there is none in terms of yeah. like money and influence and stuff like that so like that's, mm -hmm. you know they don't well that's a whole another that's a whole another thing with NFL. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is man but with with all of us that played basketball before too like the one thing i do appreciate i mean not to get off topic is that the the entrepreneurship and the mindset of the basketball player has it seems like it's always been light years ahead of you know what the football players they've they've allowed themselves to be controlled for so long that they don't they don't understand necessarily that there's a better a better way right um and i've had conversations with people about that you know with football you know the fact that they're too afraid to go on strike i mean i know i understand uh, most contracts aren't crazy. guaranteed i know but the league should have been shut down like i'm surprised yeah they're that's still my playing thing football. Man. Yeah, it's their players union man well yeah, yeah the, the nba stopped job. playing they don't have a backbone yeah they don't have backbone man they almost went on strike a couple of years ago and then the players they panicked in the meetings that and was they so gave weird the owners even more control which was crazy that's what i was Look, i mean about. Because the right, NBA, but, at least, and like you said, uh, with the basketball example, because the NBA actually had like things change, like their their regular season. I'll say, uh, I'll say, there's one big difference. I'll say there's one big difference between NBA and NFL, though. In the NFL, there's what like how many people on the team? Fifty three players. Fifty three roster plus practice. You squad, have like yeah. third, fourth string players. In the NBA, it's what twelve man, fourteen man rosters. Yeah. So and then. The, in the NBA, if you're a star basketball player, you're a star basketball player. There's not some way that can just come in and step in and, and kind of do what you do. And, and football, you, very, very interchangeable a lot of those positions. So a lot of those people mm -hmm. really can't risk losing that position because there's going to be like 100, 200 plus more people who are viable that can step in and do what you were doing. Maybe not to your same exact level, but to a high enough level where 
they're going to take that person over you because it's less of a risk and less of a headache. So, right. But that's that's why one think, huge that's why. difference between the NBA and NFL. The NBA, right. the players have all the power because they are the face of the franchise. They are the and NFL. There's very few faces of a team. It's just the team. Uh-huh. You know, right. Jerry Jones is the face of the Cowboys. Not you know, not nobody else. Like it's mm-hmm. so it's it's a it's different. But yeah, all right. But before we gotta move on to the next topic. So, <laughs> but before that, can you slide to your left for me a little bit? Uh, Sure. Yeah, try to get yourself in the center. Cut, cut yourself you. off in half, man. People can't yeah. see you. All right, you good. Mm-hmm. Um, so one one last news item. Um, it's it's kind of kind of in this line already with like artists and labels, and but this time it's with YouTube. Mm. And the European <laughs> Union has just passed a, a new directive, a new copyright directive, where it seems small, but it's it. I think it's going to have a massive impact. It's changing the onus of um, protecting copyrighted material from before it was basically ma- mostly on the individual who is uploading the content. Mm-hmm. The onus was on them to not infringe on copyright. And they're shifting the onus from them to YouTube itself. Mm-hmm. Basically saying YouTube is responsible for these, these people who have these copyright infringements. And they've mm-hmm. done this before. Mm-hmm. But now it's in law, like they're trying to change this, and uh, oh wow! I think it's going to have a massive effect on content on YouTube, which is probably the biggest content platform there is in the world. Um, yeah, I enjoyed I enjoyed this part, man, only because I I noticed the benefit from my music of that, mm-hmm. um, and that's kind of how I found out what was going on because I. Like when I went through CD Baby, they uploaded music for me under their streaming guarantee. Um, but I decided to add my album to my pay- my own YouTube page, full of uh, the full length album. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I did that, I realized I went to it one day to kind of just check my views. I'm always paying attention to did analytics. Did you get a copyright uh, notice? I didn't get the copyright notice, but what I got was when I go to this description, I noticed all of the licensing. So uh, at that point, I was like, well, I'm essentially anybody that clicks on this video, like I, I'll still get money for it, though, per se. Um, and I saw ads on some of my on, on like a, a single I uploaded um, last year. So it mm-hmm. was interesting seeing just seeing that change because it's like I uploaded this. Now I got commercials and <laughs> coming on here. But uh, mm-hmm. but it's interesting because now and what it. What a friend of mine that's a rapper explained to me, too, is anytime, like if I was to upload, I guess, a Nas record, um, then at this point, instead of me getting in trouble for it, I guess essentially, Mm -hmm. like you said, Dario, that they're putting it off more so on YouTube than like me having to watch videos for stealing or putting me in YouTube jail or doing any of that stuff. I mean, it's just crazy the changes that are taking place so rapidly. Um, I mean, people are panicking. So, people in power, these labels, all these people that own the rights to own the rights, not the people that actually create this stuff, but the people that actually own the rights are panicking because they want their money. You know, they want all their money, which is, okay, reasonable. Sure, mm-hmm. you should get paid. People shouldn't infringe on your copyright. But by putting the onus on YouTube, what do you think YouTube's going to do now? YouTube is going oh, to crack down. down so hard yeah. on anything that possibly smells like a copyright. Mm-hmm. And they already cracked down so hard on stuff that's like clearly like fit. They say anything can be fair use, but anything that's even if it's fair use, yeah. the chances of you actually, you know, getting to use it are very low. Like I've been through this multiple times. So, mm-hmm. for example, we do video roundups where we talk about new music videos and you know, movie trailers and everything. So I used to have the actual videos playing, like the actual audio playing. And I found out very quickly, even having like a 10 second thing with me talking over the actual stuff, which falls in fair use and actually commentating on the actual topic of it. I got copyright notice at the copyright notice at copyright notice. And yes, the whole process, I'll tell you the whole process is you can appeal. Mm -hmm. You can appeal it, give them the reason why. But it's, you're not appealing to YouTube. You're appealing to the owner of the copyrighted material, which could be some oh, giant label like Warner. 
So automatically, unless you're some big name channel, they just be like, yeah, fuck you, no. you can't use it. You can't right. use it. It's blocked. Or or you can play it, but we're just going to monetize everything so you don't get any money from it. <laughs> and then it's like, mm-hmm. and then if you do, and then if you appeal or you lose, you could end up, and then if you try to fight it, like you could end up getting a strike on YouTube. And for those that know, if you get three strikes, right, get three. they take down your channel. So right. it's so easy to get a strike, and you really don't have any power, even if it's clearly within the legal uh, guidelines of fair use. YouTube basically says we're hands off. It's it's up to the to the owner of it, you know. And the owner, if especially if it's a big company, mm-hmm. they're always going to say fuck you to the little guy, and like you can't do anything. But this is stupid, especially when it comes to music, because. So many so many artists have benefited off of fan covers, off of remixes, off of parodies, off of like all types of shit of using that, but doing it basically free promotion by like the hundreds of thousands of views by other people, you know, maybe maybe refurbishing their music to, mm-hmm. to something else, especially covers. And yeah. now and now like they're gonna shit up, they're gonna they're, that's gonna they're gonna about to crack down so hard on the whole sector of YouTube, which is the stupidest mm-hmm. move in the fucking world to me. Like, yeah, yeah. That's what we all use YouTube for. I mean, essentially, you're gonna check things out. I mean, obviously, people that are putting on like even rare documentaries, stuff like that, yeah. you can't get it nowhere else. Nowhere Somebody else. else might only own three copies in the world that might might you know still be around, and somebody mm-hmm. has that copy, and they're nice enough to share it with us. Right. And then you know you flag it. I so, just I just think at one point, all right, you already making millions and billions of dollars off this. Yeah. I think I think taking a small hit of versus the fucking free promo. Yeah, you're getting right. is kind of worth it. I want to hear get what it, like, Lior Cohen has to say because he's the head of music oh, on yeah. YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he had a lot to say about it. He he says he's saying a lot of things that I'm saying. Okay. That is yeah, stupid. I wanted to know. Like, I was like, he should be pissed. Like, he is pissed. Okay. He, he's pissed. He's saying we understand the need. He says, I'll, I'll just, I'll read the statement right here. Let me be clear. We understand and support the intent of Article 13. We need effective ways for copyright holders to provide their content, but we believe that the current proposal will create severe, unintended consequences for the whole industry. We still have a couple of weeks to work together towards a better final. Da, da, da. Uh. The music industry should really pay attention to these unintended consequences. The system that largely contributes to their success is at the risk of major change in the EU. That's what I mean. Uh, that's what he's talking about yeah. specifically. Right. Like you guys are getting, you guys got so big off of YouTube. You guys got so much free promo off of YouTube. Right. Like these people are literally, fans are literally promoting your shit to the ends of the earth. Yeah. And you're not spending a dime. <laughs> and like now you're about to just come show yeah. everything. That's just stupid. It's so they dumb. Need to fight hard, hard, a little harder, man. Like I get it. Like you should be able to upload somebody's entire like album and then like try to monetize it and shit like this. Like yeah. or somebody's videos and try to you know. But but if it, but they need to do a better job of protecting fair use, in my opinion, for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that's that's the thing where my my situation is a uh, slightly different than most because I. It, I uploaded essentially my own music and that's probably why I didn't mm-hmm. get flagged after I'm sure they did the research and realized that this guy is also the same guy that CD baby uploaded their this music um, mm-hmm. because most people aren't doing that where they're uploading their own full length album it's usually like there's a couple pages that I follow on there which who knows what's going to happen with them one is like um, i can't even pronounce it right it's like the letters m-i-l channel they put a bunch of like underground hip-hop stuff like that on there but they do Mm -hmm. full-length albums so i who knows what's going to happen with those types of channels because there is of course you know a hundred thousand subscribers you know what's going to happen to all these reaction videos you know what i'm saying yeah and that too yeah Yeah. oh yeah because that's like fight fight videos post fight videos and all that stuff like that reaction videos get get more views than the actual than the actual music video than the actual song that's what i subscribe that's what i subscribe to all that stuff i want to see 
And then like, there's reaction you know, videos engagement. to all like a compilation reaction of all videos. the reactions. Then they like you know yeah. they make a compilation yeah. of all the YouTubers reacting to like, like I mean, I mean like, man that's crazy do. man because there's a drum there's a drummer right now his name is uh, I think Josh Crawford but he's hmm. he's been blowing up super fast because all he does is he just takes a video that was uploaded to YouTube of a drummer hmm. and then essentially plays the video and then has a webcam of himself making facial expressions and stuff during the video and everybody's subscribing to him people love reaction channels they get the fucking oh, hundreds wow. of millions of views bro like yeah. it's ridiculous but yeah. I, I i don't see them being able to continue because it's already hard enough i'm surprised that they can do it as much as they can because they're yeah. playing the actual song they're playing the actual video well, because that's I, the thing. Once... People want to hear it. Like, because I'll be honest, sometimes there's like a new single and I want to listen to it and hear what someone else thinks about it at the same time. And sometimes that just happens to be, oh, this person's, you know, insight seems to be, you know, in this realm. Let me see what they have to say about this song while I listen to it. So, like, it, so a lot of people's first time hearing some of these songs is on the reactions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and then they, I do re- they we do reactions, but ours are like more post. Yeah. Like, I mean, I do, like you said, like you know, we do, we do reactions mm-hmm. to music and albums, but more like we don't do like first listen reactions. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> but we do like post listening reactions where we talk about you know everything we feel. And like sometimes I want to throw, I want to throw some actual songs in there, throw, you know what I'm talking about. But mm-hmm. after I start getting those copyright strikes, or not strikes, but like notices and shit, I just it's just not even worth the headache, bro. It's like not, it's just not. No, so I'm just not. like, fuck it, I'm not even gonna put them up there. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. Yeah, it's 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 gonna that one's re- gonna be really interesting to see how how that one turns out, and how that's gonna really affect YouTube, especially for yeah. artists, because I think now that's. You know, on one hand, you got Spotify kind of helping the artists out, and then you have, like, the YouTube <laughs> shit going on that's, like, you know, you get up one, and then you lose the other, like. It's- yeah, right. Yeah, and it's weird, man, because, you know, the the YouTube one, to me, is a little bigger deal, mainly because we, as people, tend to hear with our eyes. So the fact that there's video, that's, that's the main draw to YouTube being able to do the, that type of thing, which Spotify is not doing, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, and it's interesting, Dario, because like you said, you you think this is like the way they're going about it. They're they're doing just like politicians. They're making changes that and they're presenting it that it's just a small change. But uh, but like you said, it's it's actually bigger Massive. than what. Yeah, it's way bigger than what. Mm-hmm. people realize right now because they're presenting it like oh you know this is and 100 percent, just... it's major labels behind it 100 percent. yeah oh for sure yeah i mean that's they this was it, it seems like i don't know who did what first but it seems like it's part of the the kickback plan against spotify maybe like if they're going to do this with spotify then maybe we need to kind of ramp up what we're doing i mean i wouldn't know because you were the one that told me about the spotify do you know who mm-hmm. Who kind of made that move first? Was it Spotify, and then the, um, the YouTube kind of uh, cracked down after that? I, I want to say Spotify only because I remember hearing about that one before, like days before. Yeah. Uh-huh. I heard about the YouTube one, but I don't, I'm not. I can't say 100 percent certainty. But you guys can let us know in the comments which one which one kicked off first. Yeah, the major labels, man. That's that's a joke, man. But I mean, that's the thing is they they did it to themselves, man. That, it, if it all comes down crashing and burning, that they're only gonna be able to look at themselves. I mean, the, just the way they've handled so many artists throughout the years, and just the the talent pool is not what it is with when you compare it with uh, like indie labels. Like I look at um, mainly the L.A. cats, man. Like between. Mm. Um, TDE and then the musician side of, of that, which is mo- I mean, look, like the brain rec- feeder being and all those record, guys. Being in the record label business is it's a dying industry, and they're just clinging on to whatever yeah. little change they can. That's it. 
Right. But it's a dying industry. It's going to it die. Is. Like it's, it, Yo, it, it's is, impossible. Man. Especially since records, nobody's hardly buying anymore. It's made this the stream doing all that individual singles. That's yeah. that's what our our culture is into. Nobody's carrying around. You know, people want to support the artist now. Album. Like if if uh-huh. I if I have if I can support an independent artist, I will support somebody directly over buy something from a label produced. You know, artists yeah. any day. Like that's why people. That's why all these independent artists are doing so well because they're they're selling stuff like they're like they, that's how they can make like vinyl. You know, print like a hundred vinyl records. You know, do like these enhanced you know pr- uh, products, products, even though maybe right. their audience isn't as big as somebody else. But no. it's it, it's like their fan base is so in tune yeah. with them because they can follow them yeah. on everything. Mm-hmm, that they're right. willing to pay that premium just to you know support them because they love what they're doing. Like, but if they were on a label, like I don't think they'd be able to do that. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's just, yeah. it's 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 kind of changed. Like it it it's just them fighting, trying everything they can. Their hardest to fight against like the the rising tide. That's it. But it's mm-hmm. nothing I can do. It's gonna happen eventually. Like it's already been, it's already basically on its lifeline since the early 2000s, and now it's like it's. They, they can really see it closely. It's about to be done. It's about to be over. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a good thing. But, yeah. Uh, so, we did a deep dive right there <laughs> uh, on Spotify changes, YouTube changes. Yeah. Uh, for everybody out there listening, you know, let us know what you guys think about what's going on, you know. Uh, especially if you or yourself are an artist and you know, have to go through the whole process of dealing with YouTube and Spotify. It's almost impossible these days not to. So mm-hmm. you know, we, we want to know what you think about it. Let us know in the comments down below. So you were on our podcast a long time ago and you were on there because you had an album coming out. Yeah. Yeah, man. It was, um, you want to you know, tell us, you know, what was yeah, your feelings yeah. uh, after your first release? Um, what well, was the responses? You know, what was it? You know, just what was the overall yeah. experience of releasing? You know, your first one, and, and what people think about it? What you think about it? Looking back at it, and you hope yeah. to learn from it. Um, man, it's it's been crazy. Um, mainly because I think from I have to actually go listen back to the first podcast, but at the time, I. The big hang-up with 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 the uh, the debut album for me, um, Jaron Lamar Davis, my view through the lens of music was. Mm-hmm. I had been listening back and forth to those songs for so long. Most of the material I wrote in 2015, so uh, mm-hmm. I was not prepared to um, to receive. Uh, I won't say accolades because I haven't won any awards or anything, but I guess the rave reviews that I've gotten from listeners, I was not expecting mainly because the music, to me, I'm, I was so self-critical about a lot of it. Um, being fresh out of school, I, the school that I went to didn't really, they didn't encourage building artistry. They, they were more about academia, and I say that mm-hmm. to mean like a curriculum, and they teach every kid the same. They, they weren't developing, you know, yeah. the, the individual ability in each musician or artist they weren't able to identify oh this person has you know a special gift so i say all that to say since i was in school and i was playing drums it was more so like oh he's a drummer so a lot of people didn't realize i had the the wide palette of creativity um even though i knew i had it i just sometimes you bottle up your gifts when you know that the people around you. well let me ask you how crucial do you think schooling is for like Musicians, not not musicians, you know, that want to play in like the orchestra or like you know some some setting uh-huh. like that, but like just musicians who want to be more independently creative and just you know make music that they want to make. Right now, that uh, man, that that question, I'd say, and this is obviously I didn't go to every single university, but mm-hmm. the big percentage of school will be. Uh, because I've never, I've, I've always wondered, how can you standardize, you know, something like how to be a musician? Well, really, and that's, that's the problem. You really can't. And the, the problem is also that schools are behind the times. Like at, just like the labels, the, they're not 
there's some schools that are doing this, like your Berkeley Music in Boston, and there's a few other schools. But for the most part, the majority of them, there's guys that are halfway practicing or they're not necessarily extremely proficient at their instrument, but they're going to school, they're passing and teaching music, then they get a degree. And so they're professors at these schools. And the problem with that is, um, one, usually they're only offering a jazz program if you're not in classical they're not offering commercial music mm -hmm. there's some schools that are but the issue with that is jazz you can't really build a career off of they're not telling the truth mm -hmm. uh, they're not teaching people electronics and and all of the things of our era because that's 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 what music is now it's you know yeah. using electronics and being able to do these mm -hmm. things they're not teaching that. So mm -hmm. um, I would say it's not very beneficial from the music side unless you're doing the things that you need to do on your own, like mm -hmm. it, picking a school where there's a lot of kids that are going to graduate and have music careers. Again, like a Berkeley Music, a lot of their got musicians that go there, they leave school early. They're not pressured to get a degree. They leave like mm -hmm. after their first or second year and they hit the road with Beyonce. Like one of my friends, she's a trumpet player from New Jersey mm -hmm. and she's been playing with Beyonce for the last three years um, oh, wow. and the, I, I got another girl that went to Berkeley that played uh, she was on a couple of my rec um, uh, my songs from my debut album and she's uh, the house percussionist on the Colbert show so um, I don't believe oh, that she God. finished school either because that school was cultivating they were preparing the students to have that type of career. So, mm -hmm. so when the opportunity came, they didn't pressure you to graduate. Um, and the school, the school that I was at in Missouri, I, I got ready. Mm -hmm. I tried to transfer multiple times. Mm -hmm. um, one, one time I tried to transfer to a conservatory in Kansas city and, uh, Mm. teacher he's just like you got so much you need to learn. <laughs> like i've been keep in mind i've been playing drums since i was two years old i've played in mm. all different types of backgrounds the church and uh and i'm i'm hungry and self-driven but in in um uh, i'll call it what it is like white academia world because that's what it is they mm -hmm. oh you got so much you need to learn and like yeah. you said Doris, it's not music is so like immeasurable it's hard to gauge so how do you know like we're always learning if mm -hmm. if you're an individual or as a man you should always be learning so what is what does that mean you know what you percentage so of people you you've played with will you say is like school taught and versus just experience taught you know oh man i'd say it's for me it's half and half and i say that to say again not to get into race but since i'm on both sides of the playing field mm -hmm. depending on the style of music usually if i'm playing neo soul or gospel you know r&b pretty much anything that's like the music that people want to hear most of those guys were not schooled mm -hmm. um they may have done like what i did like i wasn't schooled i had been learning and playing but then i decided to go to school just to polish up and then try to meet people and stuff too but mm -hmm. i was already a professional musician when i went to school which is a lot different than somebody coming out of high school that hasn't really you know played any studios or or worked with professional musicians before yeah. so um i'd say that percentage uh it's a lot stronger for me but when i'm doing like straight ahead jazz gigs or like private wedding parties it seems like i'm playing with more school musicians um mm -hmm. i'm in a piano trio right now with with this uh killing piano player and he's a good friend of mine but he he's went to some extremely well, you prestigious think, schools you would think those are more like um guaranteed i don't want to say guaranteed but more like consistent gigs would be more towards more like <clears throat> leaning towards that more academic uh, musician. If you go to the right school, because and that's what a lot of a lot of people when I was wondering should I even go to school for music. One thing that they always said mm -hmm. is if you go to a music school, make sure you go somewhere where there's a lot of talent and like-minded um, people peers. Because essentially, those are the ones that will hire you when they graduate. Mm -hmm. if, mm -hmm. You know, so basic. You have to gauge it almost like a basket, like a scout looking at it as okay this person is talented but they're also putting the work in and they have a real shot of doing something big so the problem with that mm -hmm. also is when you do it in missouri that 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 whole thing is kind of null and void because nobody's in missouri so if you're going to music school you need to be considerate of where i'd recommend like going mm -hmm. to somewhere in a, one of the major hubs of course like new york la 
um, even Chicago or Nashville, like somewhere like that. Mm -hmm. um, Chicago is not a huge music scene, but those types of cities you have, since it's a bigger city, you have people that are probably going to be willing to move to a New York or L.A. after they're done with school. And that's usually how a lot of guys get, mm -hmm. you know, the good consistent work and, and honestly separates people from being able to play at, if you're playing at a bar compared to those that are on the road with a Kendrick Lamar. A lot mm -hmm. of the a lot of the music circles are so tight knit that if you're in L.A., the percentage of getting a top pop gig is just it's harder because there's more musicians around. But the percentages yeah. of probability is still greater than being in, you know, um, St. Louis. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of factors to weigh in. Um, but if mm. you know school, school could be a good means to an end too. If you do, if you take it serious enough to stay in the practice room, practicing for eight, nine, ten hours a day, which is essentially what I was doing. But it was mainly because I was already married when I went back to school for the second time. So I mean, uh, if you're gonna do the college, if you're gonna do what all of us have done before, <laughs> like I, Darius, I, I haven't uh, kicked it with you personally a lot but i mean all of us we did we did our um share of you know partying in college so <laughs> you know if you're doing that and you're in music school i don't know how much it's going to work out for you unless you're one of the few that are just you know you have a natural knack for music um, mm -hmm. which some guys actually do uh, and that's usually what you see when you see guys that didn't go to school they were they're they still honed their craft but they they had a gift to do it they kind of had it you know so 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 okay, um, back to your album a little bit. You did the college thing, um, you know. So, so you put it out. Mm -hmm. So what was the response to it? Oh man, so the yeah, that's I forgot we were there, man. My bad. But uh, <laughs> but with the record, man, like I was saying, being that I had spent so much time with it, I produced it myself. So it was a lot of tireless nights of overanalyzing and you know back and forth that I was just relieved to have it out but I wasn't expecting a reception from mm. the album so after I released it I got a lot of fantastic um, reception from a lot of guys even in the industry that I've looked up to for a long time that have uh, huge producer credits and Grammys which was humbling mm. um, because I just you know I didn't expect anything so a lot of it well, once I released it, my main focus was I need to get back in the studio and work on the next project because that music mm -hmm. I did so long ago, I have a new side of me that I'm wanting to show. But mm -hmm. having said that, I've gotten some great opportunities from this album. Um, in August, I did uh, the Richmond Jazz Festival. I had a, a headline spot there, which was super crazy because I... Mm -hmm. I hadn't reached out to anybody to get it, and the the level of artists that were there, I mean, was everybody from, um, let's see, Rakim to uh, Gladys mm -hmm. Knight to um, Brian McKnight, Frankie Beverly, um, you know, Joe oh, wow. Scott was out there last year, and Erica Badu. So it's really interesting um, when they uh, when they emailed me uh, about doing a spot. Yeah, I thought I thought it was gonna be all local local artists there because I'm <laughs> right. it's like you know i don't have that platform but it just releasing this album has taught me a lot and it also shows me that you know being on a label or any of that stuff doesn't matter if something's meant for you mm -hmm. and uh and and you have a product that people enjoy uh they really don't care about that which has encouraged me a lot to kind of change my focus so um so i had that happen and then i uh, just man in the past two weeks I've been getting a lot of airplay on um, on the major radio station in Baltimore, 88.9 WEAA, mm. on their morning show. Uh, they were mm. doing this uh, this fundraising drive for their for the station, uh, and I I, I I listened to it every morning. So I was listening to it, and they were taking a hundred dollar donations for people with small businesses. So mm. uh, and then they said. Um, if somebody, you know, if you have a small business or you donate at the, at least a hundred dollar mark, then you can um, you can call. Uh, also, request your favorite song and all this, and we'll give you a shout out. So, mm. I called them. Even I'm like, I'm just gonna see if they'll play my song because essentially, 
I've had some publicists that wanted to reach uh, that have reached out to me, and mm-hmm. that's usually that's what they do. So they oh, just yeah. try to shop you around for press, so like radio stations and um, and review album reviews. So right, uh, it's expensive though. So I figured I need to start mm-hmm. doing this on my own. If I'm if I'm donating a hundred dollars to this radio station, that's still a lot cheaper than what I would be paying a publicist to essentially try to get the same thing for me with no guarantee yeah, that smart. they would even get the music. So, yeah. so I called him and I told him, I said, I don't need a shout out. I'm not a small business, but I said, I have a hundred dollars. I got, uh, and I have one request that you play, uh, that you play a song from my debut album. So then they start asking huh. me like, what, what, um, what kind of, what kind of music is it? This, this and that. So I gave them a song off my album, uh, four, which a lot of people like, mm. and uh, and I told him I was like a lot of people like this one, so I'll let you play that. So they before they played it, they pronounced my name all wrong and all that. So I called <laughs> I called him while the song was playing to tell him my name, and uh, and the one girl, she's like, yo, this is this is dope and all this. So she's she's all excited, taking all my information down. So it, it's crazy, man. That was That's last. Tight. Yeah, man, that was last Wednesday. So they. They were just going on and on on the radio about it afterwards. Like my wife called me, I was trying to listen, so I was mad because they was like, "Oh, we're adding, we're definitely adding this music to the playlist." Like they're saying all this on the air. Oh wow! And um, uh, and a couple people that knew me from Baltimore called in and like, "Hey, I know, I like, I know this guy. He's a great drummer and all that." So yeah. I, this fast forward to this Monday, I was driving in the car again and I heard uh, Mr. Scroggins during during the morning oh, show. Oh swag! Is, it's yeah, so I thought my phone had went off because I had it plugged into the aux cord. I'm like, man, something. I thought my phone started glitching. Yeah. I was like, oh man, they playing, they playing my music again. So, right. So, uh, <laughs> apparently, man, they played it. They played different songs on my album all week this week. One of the girls that runs the radio show commented on my Instagram the day. She's like, we got to get you in for a for a performance live on the air. So I'm Ooh. I'm kind of taking it all in because it seems like hey man, it, hey don't don't forget who puts you on first. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, yeah, man. This, this has been a oh, seriously though. This has been a conglomerated effort, and the the I really appreciate um, you guys mainly because we're we're kind of growing in our industries at the same time, and with that, yeah. there's a lot of risk on taking guys like even interviewing somebody like me who like I I don't consider myself to have a name. Um, I definitely don't as an artist. Like as a freelance musician, I, mm-hmm. I I do a little bit in certain parts, but it's different when you're leading a band, especially as hey, a drummer. Hey, we all nobody's out here till one day we somebody. Well, yeah, that's that's it, man. But it's it's a matter of being able to see that vision. A lot of people don't like I. Even when I'm picking my band, I look at kind of the guys of who can grow, like who already plays at this level, not necessarily who has a name already. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of people don't think like that, so I definitely appreciate you know the press that that you've gotten me, um, even just through through you guys' avenues. And of course, it won't be the end, man. Like this is something you know, ten, fifteen years from now, so we'll be able to look back yeah, and laugh. I mean, so it sounds like you know, response has been great. People love it. I mean, four that was definitely one of my favorite uh, tracks off the album, if I remember correctly. Man, um, I I appreciate that. Before you yeah. go on to the crazy thing about four, man, is that. Uh, that song, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm super transparent, so even if I'm on the podcast, I have to tell the truth, but that one was the one I had the most concern about, um, mainly because there were a lot of issues during the recording process that I wasn't happy with. I brought in different musicians and tried to patch up things, and I just put a lot of manufactured mm. work on into that song compared to everything else that seemed to flow naturally, so it was really interesting after the fact that most people they're just like oh man like i love four because i i went through three bass players like it was a, it was a uh, disaster trying to find um the sound that i was hearing in my head so right. uh, hey, so it's like it interesting man. Man. yeah man you know i'm learning as i go so and that's that's the other part of when you're being a producer i have to kind of sometimes take friendship and self out of the equation and look at the bigger picture which it's tough for me, man, because I consider myself somebody that gets along with, you know, most people and uh, and also try not to burn bridges. So it's interesting when I have to go different directions like that. But uh, mm. but it worked out. So sounds like it. Um, so now that that's up, uh, what you got? I know you I know I'm sure you're cooking something up. Yeah, man. I mean, I it's it's hard for me to 
talk about things when it's not done already. But um, okay. but I'm working. But um, but you know, I mean, I do. I move in silence, but I'm here on the air, so it's good to you know advertise. But yeah, I'm I'm getting ready um here in the next couple of months to um start working on my my next project, which is. I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be uh, crazy, man. I, the 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 ideas I have for it, it's it's definitely um, theme based. It's kind of based off of one idea, so it's definitely going to be um, more of a storytelling uh, type of album compared to this last one, um, with a lot of dark, I say, uh, dark things revolving around this. This sounds cliche, but there um, police brutality. But there was mainly one situation um, that really stuck with me. This kid in Pittsburgh in um, in June got killed by a um, by a uh, police officer. And mm -hmm. what what made this situation? He was 16, but um, but what made it unique was I saw myself um, for the mm -hmm. first time because this kid he was somebody that was a um, honor roll student I was always a good student but mm -hmm. he also he he lived that double life of wanting to be cool which I feel like I skated I skated out a lot of situations that I should have been killed for sure in high school mm -hmm. um, you know he was he was riding in the car doing whatever he was doing but um, I think they had just did a drive-by so mm -hmm. it was the the situation that really resonated with me was here's this kid that's he was all always involved with community service and helping people. He's 16. He write poetry. He was an honor roll kid. But then he also, dep depending on when you saw him, mm -hmm. he was this, this thug. So he was doing, right. he was doing both at the same time, which is unusual because a lot of guys, they're either one or the other. So, yeah. um, I felt like I was a wannabe, if anything, just for the people that I hung around and the situations that I, uh, well, man, that God kept me out of because I've seen a lot and a lot of my friends now. I mean, man, that, try, hey, trying to be cool, man, that's the downfall of a lot of people. And yeah, and until, true. you know, especially the black community, until like until that that fake gangster shit, that old gang banging, telling drugs shit, until that shit's no longer seen as cool, people are going to keep falling into that dumb ass trap. Like, that shit's it, just it, not cool, bro. Like, it, exactly. But we. Man. But we we we'll definitely glamorize that part and make it seem cool, so people definitely yeah. fall into that trap, man. Yeah, mm. man. So that's so I I kind of revolve. I got a lot of stuff around that um, that theme, along with the fact of you know the reasons behind why they shot him. I mean, he was running from out of the car because he was scared, but uh, it was one of those things where yeah. he it was like he was lawless. And I went back to another situation from St. Louis, the Dred Scott case, where uh, the Supreme Court. Mm ruled um that black men black black people didn't have um any laws that the white man had to respect so i'm tying a lot of things into that along with my upbringing and i'm doing it through uh it's it's, it's gonna probably still be a jazz album because that's just what people say but it's mm -hmm. it's mainly it's a lot of funk uh yeah. hip-hop I, 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 yeah man i still say it's the, just like how i described the last album but different sounds mm -hmm. um so I'm, you know, I'm interested. I already got, I got the album art already. So nice. that keeps me inspired because I'm my friend. When I kind of told him the storyline, he, mm -hmm. he had visions to just get started. So I told him, well, I'll take nice. a look, just let you do what you do. And, um, you know, looking at some of the work, I don't want to talk about it too much yet, but it, it gets me in a different, in a different zone. So I'm yeah. really, really excited about recording this one. Um, Darice, I definitely hope. I hope that we can link up uh, because I'm going to be recording it in Brooklyn. So, yeah, uh, man, for I'll sure. I'll definitely be in contact um, so we can, you know, break some bread together, man, in person. All right, absolutely. It's, <laughs> if it's anything like the first one, man, it sounds it sounds it sounds dope. It sounds like something I definitely cannot wait to hear. And of course, oh, yeah. you know, we'll be we'll be right there to tell people, you know, go check it out, go listen to it, put it on the site, and everything, just like last time. But man, I, I appreciate have to do that, have to do a little a little more. I'm cook up a little something more for the collab next time too, for sure. No, oh, yeah, man, dude, I got this. Um, and you know, off 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 record, we'll we'll definitely talk. Um, I got some things I'm just not completely ready to share yet. Um, even as of today, some 
crazy good information, but uh, even with the collab stuff too, I think some of the music on this album will definitely be able to um, work for some of the visions that you that you have for for your brand. So I'll I'll be sharing some of that with you uh, before it's released, just to get your get definitely. your thoughts. Definitely. Um, definitely. Yes. So <clears throat> gonna keep this moving a little bit. Already hit the one hour mark. You had a lot of good talks. I'm gonna hit this last topic. So today, uh, we just had a post go up on the website. I don't know if you've seen our website lately, but we have a lot of good articles up there. And, yeah, um, man, I've been checking today, them. And today, um, we had one from Jeff Mitchell, uh, one of our top writers. He posted one talking about um, the titles dealing in death, what's happening in hip-hop. And, you know, he's talking about He's using two examples, XXX and Tashion and Mac Miller. And he kind of talks about this trend in hip hop about these young artists dying or, you know, about either violence or drugs or, you know, just just this untimely demise. And it seems to happen a lot in hip hop, especially recently. And um, basically the question he's posing is like, what, what, in their music, you know, what's their music saying about their lives? And, and as us, as like listeners, should we feel some type of responsibility to say something or to like act when you hear them expressing, you know, all of this, this depression, this pain, all this stuff in their music before Mm -hmm. these things happen. So I don't know, like from your perspective of the position and then me and Teresa's perspective, perspective as a consumer which you guys might think about this topic but i'm gonna start with you to reese like i don't know if you what do you feel about oh about that well i mean it's such an interesting topic <laughs> to think about just over just the the span of hip-hop and then just like lately the deaths that have happened in hip-hop and um I don't know, man. That's so... Ah. It's like... Well, because like, as a fan, you, you, you're you inspired by these artists <clears throat> because you see a type of pain. You might recognize the pain and you might it might help you deal with it because you know they're dealing with it. Like, they're still alive and they're still doing... You know, but then when they die, it's like, shit. You know, it's like, should people be doing more or like, or is the art the most important thing? Like people are like with Kanye right now, like should he just stop working, you know, and get healthy (laughs) or, or just push himself as hard as possible, you know, and, and try to make up for the thing he did two seconds ago and then trip trying to do the, the next thing, you know, like, I don't know. It's weird. The lyrics, I mean, when you though, hear, yeah, like when you hear these artists speaking about these things constantly, like I think X specifically, and yeah. even I mean even Mac was just talking about you know for years they've been talking about like depression and and yeah. just all these things. I mean, things Biggie and, and Pac both said they were gonna die. Like, yeah, I mean they, you gotta if music or any type of art to be the best artist that you could be the the music or whatever your form of art is, it should be a, a direct reflection uh, or expression of your true self. Um, mm-hmm. Now, I think we've been desensitized even from a listener standpoint, because we went through such a phase where people were not really being true in their music. Mm-hmm. So you learn to just block out when people are saying things for, Oh, they're just saying that mainly during the big car, you know, talking about hoes all the time during that era. Mm -hmm. That's when people, I think, kind of shut off from a listening standpoint of filtering what's real and what's what wasn't. But it seems like with this younger generation um, and this is my opinion, of of course, the the lyrical talent may not be there or that type of thing, but they have more of a. I guess transparency or don't care mentality about they're them. not afraid to express exactly. who they it's, are and exactly how they feel exactly. Mm-hmm. So I think we should take that 
I think we should take that serious. And I say that because it seems like the track record of any artist that says they're going to die, it's like almost 100%. Like I look at Amy Winehouse or even like uh, mm-hmm. back the jazz bass player that um, he wrote the this song called Portraits of Tracy, which has been sampled by mm-hmm. SWV for Rain and uh, Chingy, like everybody that – it was this bass solo essentially, but he he told everybody that he was gonna die at 35 and all this, and then that's what happened. Like, um, and do you he, think it's them prophesizing it, or is it just them kind of like crying out for help, like yo, somebody step in, like somebody help me? Like, I I think it could be a the little way bit I'm of going both. on, you know. I mean, with, can't with the, sometimes it just seems like I don't. Dude, that's deep because it's also like it sounds like it might be some type of spiritual thing too, but I I that I don't know. Um, but I know even like with that bass player, Jocko Pistorius, he said he would die at 35 and he kept doing his thing. He was dealing with all this depression and then he ended up going to rehab. Um, but then he got out and the way he died was basically by a bar fight. He got beat up by a club bouncer. So it's one of those things like, did he really predict that he knew he was going to die? He just didn't know how or, you know, it's mm. it's. it's 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 interesting, man. But but I do think that the attempt should already be there to try to help. Um, but obviously, uh, I don't know how much say a fan would have. And like in Mac Miller's case, you know, he had been battling it for years. And even I know, like with Ariana Grande, they said she she was constantly trying to get him help and mm-hmm. end up leaving him because you know he couldn't he couldn't kick kick his uh his drug habit so right. and that he's not the first one i mean kurt cobain like all of these oh it's not guys. it's not it's just in rap a hip-hop. lot more it's now, just that hip-hop is the most mainstream and popular right now so it's it, right I, and that's and what I, makes it tough mm-hmm. it's just hip-hop you know mac miller he he was white of course but with hip-hop being kind of synonymous with black culture we're so conditioned to bottle things in that it seems like even when somebody starts to admit things in our culture, you kind of ignore it. Like, oh, they'll pull through. They're they're strong enough to get over it. You know. Yeah. yeah. You know, I've dealt with some depression lightly um, a couple years ago, mainly from nothing else other than like a bunch of deaths that were taking place. I don't deal with death well, so a lot of yeah. friends and just it seemed like everything was happening bad at one time i was going through uh, the marital issues and all that stuff and mm-hmm. then it just snuck up on me um so now i'm a believer that it can like i, I know what it feels like now um and before i i would also be that person kind of just blowing it off and thinking like oh, mental illness may be real but that's just for this person because they they did it to themselves type of thing you know or mm-hmm. or that they can overcome it on their own uh, but now I, you know, I don't know. I think there are some proactive steps that you have to take, uh, you know. But that's that's mm-hmm. revisionist or like hindsight, of course. Yeah. Um, because that's kind of how I beat mine. They tried to get me on medicines and stuff, and I started having too many body, bodily issues for my liking. You know, my I was playing drums on the boat at the time, and my my vision was getting all jacked up. So I got off of all the medication they tried to put me on. I was just like, I'm gonna figure out the root cause. And then fight it myself. Like it might take longer, but I needed to actually mm-hmm. fight it instead of kind of fall victim to it. So um, well, it's interesting. He was, he was kind of proposing that, yeah. you know, social media and everything. It's so easy to reach people and reach out to people that fans shouldn't hesitate to like reach out to an artist that they think is seriously going through something you know um seriously dealing with stuff especially when they hear it in the music constantly over and over again um mm-hmm. if you're like you know if you love that person and you love that artist and you love what they create that you can relate to that you should do that but i also mm-hmm. think that like fans can be <laughs> some of the greatest things and then they can be some of the worst things you know mm-hmm. to happen to somebody like yeah there's that one point where mm-hmm. they can't be that positive impact and reach out to you, then they can be like the causing force of it almost or like you know the reason that people do stay in these funks for so long like where they kind of don't like you know mm-hmm. an artist can be in that really dark phase and the music all sounds one certain way yeah. and then they kind of get out of it and then the music sounds different <laughs> and then the fans are like what happened like what happened to you like i'll be honest i mean there's love a few for. artists like, this that, is the music that we love you for you know yeah. and they kind of don't want them to get better almost at the, at the same point you know they want them to kind of stay in that same 
But that's right. what I'm saying about the music. Theory. Like, is it the music? The fans want, you know, like, what are the fans going to say? Like, would they rather them sound like that when they're on the drugs? Because, like, you know, sometimes they don't sound the same, you know, or like. Or depressed or, you know, not making the same type of music. Yeah. yeah. But honestly, there's yeah. a few artists that remind me of, like, feelings like that, that I, you know, like, are we going to push, you know, like, like little Uzi Vert kind of sometimes. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of, too is a little he seems sadder than he should he used to actually seems happier on his videos but those are all promoting songs so i don't know you know he 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 honestly seems like he's doing less and less like like i don't know so like he's one that i would be worried about man these these fans these fans are the ones that actually do because i like i saw where ari lennox i guess like a few months ago she like she tweeted, posted on Instagram, said she was giving up music forever and all this. Uh, mm. A lot of it was because of the fans. Like there's, I forgot the syndrome that they call it, but once you reach that su- success or you reach popularity, yeah, they want to see you enjoy, lose. Yeah, they That's enjoy it. your music, and it, it almost puts you in more of a depression because you all that pressure. Mm-hmm. You know, you 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 feel this expectation to deliver a certain level of of product. Yeah. And you don't know if you can meet your own demands because of all these fans and all of that stuff. And that mm-hmm. can put you into a shell, too. I mean, you see, it seems like most of the ones that deal with the most extreme levels are the ones that are the most popular. I mean, you see like a Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato, I was yeah. thinking about her. Super popular, almost, man. I love her music, that. man. Yeah. yeah so she She's an amazing writer. Like, her yeah. songs are, yeah. Well, it's just I mean, sad to see. It's tough. It's definitely, it's a deep question. It's not really one that has a clear answer. There's no clear answer to it because you can't, at one point, as a fan, you know, you're going to do so much. And and as an artist, you can only look towards other people so much. You still have to internally be happy, like, by yourself. You know, at the same time, you have to be happy with yourself. And you have to be happy with the music you create. You can't always look out for others all the time so i mean but yeah. in a genre or in like an art form that is so like for everybody you know like you create something it's for everybody that mm-hmm. so everybody kind of has their input on it whether you like it or not so i mean it's a i don't know i don't i don't really know what can curb this trend in hip-hop because it just seems like we're in like a really emo space right now so yeah it does a lot of that's man. It's it's attacking the issues that get you that get you to that point, which is usually it seems like childhood. Like I know with Demi, and the parental, you know, all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. It seems like the older we get, we never address how we grew up, and uh, which yeah. does make us into the artists that 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 we are. But at the same time, at some point, it's going to constantly haunt you in every relationship you have with your friends or boyfriend, girlfriend or whatever, if you don't address. I can't, I mean, I can't speak on every artist in hip hop, but I know for a lot of people in hip hop, since it is such a obviously black dominated genre, I, Mm -hmm. I I think a lot of it does come down to just the generational trauma of just Mm -hmm. generation after generation after generation. You seeing this shit happen like over and over and you just kind of lose hope, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you turn towards something else and you turn towards, you know, so it's yeah, I don't, I don't really know. I don't really know the answer to. to, to I gotta it, read it, that it article. Just a, yeah, it's just a. Mm-hmm. It was an interesting article in the post. You said that was today. It was that today. Um, yeah, 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 on, on the front out. page. Yeah. So that's some, that's I mean, stuff. for those of you you know want to see a little more about what he was kind of talking about, you definitely should read the article. It's a great article. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any thoughts about this topic that we talked about, you guys can let us know in the comments down below. So let's uh, start to wind this down a little bit um, before we go. What uh, any new music you're listening to that you suggest to people check out? Anything? Uh, man, I've been super tunnel vision, uh, but mm-hmm. I've been checking out a few artists, man, from this. Uh, there's a few record labels out in L.A. Um, most people... If you're a music lover, you may be familiar with Brain Feeder, which is like Flying Lotus. 
Thundercat. No flying lotus. Um, Thundercat. So, oh, okay, yeah. So it's a branch off of them. They're all under the same like Brain Feeder is the label that they're under, but they're also under one major distributor. So the other one I've been listening to is uh, World Galaxy Music. So that's out in L.A. too. Similar sound as all the Flying Lotus stuff, but there's this girl on there I've been checking out, man. Her name is uh, Flying Lotus is out there. Oh, yeah, man. She's, her name is uh, Natasha Grama. I've been checking her out. She's like a, a pop soul. I don't know what it is. It's kind of all in that same line of like the Flying Lotus type electronics, but behind like some jazzy vocals. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm digging her voice right now. So I've been checking her out. Nice. Um, man, who else have I been? I've been listening to a lot of stuff, and now, uh, as usual, you get you get the brain uh, brain freeze. Uh, right. It'll come back to me after the podcast, but yeah, I've been checking her out a lot, man, lately. Um, just kind of getting a refreshing, relaxing vibe because it seems like my life has been so fast paced lately. So I've been, you know, easing in a little bit, mm. um, and then I've been checking out uh, not rapidly but as i can some of the the newer um hip-hop releases um so of course uh lupe with his his mm. release that was what a couple of weeks ago so i'm sure y'all already talked mm. about that but yeah. uh but you know that yeah yeah there's a few um there's a few guys that i know on that album of uh, bass player by the name of nigel rivers um mm. who i met and jammed with a little bit when i was living in the dallas fort worth area he's on a couple tracks um there's a lot of other jazz, like jazz uh, musicians that are also playing and working on production behind the scenes on on that album, which mm-hmm. I always always enjoy because I feel like if, if it's a music of our culture, a lot yeah. of these genres they're kind of intertwined more than people may realize. So, right. Um, but yeah, I mean it's it hasn't been anything too major, man. Just I'm I just try to keep my ears open to everything at all times. So. Yeah. You know, and then pull from it when I feel the inspiration to listen. I'll grab an album and then I'll just play that album for um, maybe a couple months. The same thing I said, man. In the first, right. the nothing changes for me, man. I did the I did the first video, Dario. Um, I was honored enough to uh, do the very first video for for you guys, um, the video interview. I think back in 2016, yeah. and I kind of. I said the same thing back then too, but I'm always a big believer of that. I guess the musician in me, I'll take one album that just dissect it for a long time, but I kind of yeah. keep my ears open until I All get right, so that inspiration. Let me get your quick opinion. Uh huh. Little Wayne, is he back? No. That's my opinion. I know a lot of people <laughs> enjoy, but I don't like some of the things he did on that record, man. Just like taking carbon copy, uh, you know, tracks that have already been done before and then kind of treating it like it was a mixtape. I don't know yeah. if I'm really a fan, and it, a lot of it seemed forced or dated because some of the music, obviously, he had mm-hmm. finished, but he was dealing with the label. I think that the fact that he's older now, and it just, I have a vision of Wayne, of what he was when I listened to him religiously. Now I see yeah. like the little Uzi Verts and all the young school of rappers, and then him trying to do their type of thing. It doesn't really seem like it meshes well, to see, me. See, I look, I look at it differently. Oh, I know he's not doing. It he's not doing their thing. They're doing his thing. Like he yeah, was he doing this been way before while, they man. were doing it. So of course they're gonna sound like <laughs> sound similar, considering he's basically birthed all these all these littles and youngs that you got right now. Yeah. And I, I, I don't think he's back. But you can't deny that this was better than the Carter Ford era and. Oh, it was definitely better than, put out since it, then. No, it was for sure better than the Carter Four, man. But I was it's just really interesting when you see like the way they manufactured it together. Like Wayne was not a big rapper to be known for all these like big mm-hmm. features on his album. So that was also interesting because usually when you see a lot of that, you see where they don't think that the the main act can support uh or make the album good enough. Like usually mm-hmm. it, when you're on a high level, your features are guys on your label that are under you, or, you know, you might have one track where you, you have a misnomer of somebody of equal skill level, but to just have like, you got Snoop coming on, just doing like cameos and you yeah. know, Kendrick. And it, it seemed like they really did everything they could to try to well, force Wayne into the For line. an album that was in uh, production hell for about six years. 
it sounded a lot better than I expected it. Uh, yeah, I agree with that. The expectation was low. So yeah. Yeah. It, it was a, I mean, the album wasn't bad, uh, but when you ask me if I think he's back, I still think no. I'd have to hear something else in the aftermath of this to see. Oh, yeah, sure. me too. Yeah. 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 I, I, I think this project's going to be the most telling. Yeah. Right. I heard Ice Cube's getting ready, getting ready to drop another album. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. yeah. Moving on. Reece, classic. Listen to anything <laughs> recently other than Mick Jenkins? Oh, man. Mick, man. How is that? I haven't uh, checked music? that out yet. Mick's my boy, man. Yeah. Have you have you checked out the Mick Jenkins? Is that record not good? I hear crickets. Man. What's going on? You have to check it out. Well, Reece Dario doesn't like it because it's it's nah. It's like mad. Uh, it's it's, it's little, extremely jazz driven, and it's very low key. It's more like a um. It's not like any of his other projects, Mick Jenkins' other projects, but. It's chill. It's like so chill. It's so, so chill. It's it, like a it's like a conversation album. So it's great bedtime music. Is that what you're saying? No, because yeah. you don't listen to stuff <laughs> critically. <laughs> like, so you tried to say Balenciaga is in fire? <laughs> that, 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 Barcelona. Dario. I said Balenciaga. Barcelona. Yo, Dar- Dar- Dario don't like the Mick, the new Mick album. I don't know. Look, Nick is cool. Put on, put on, He's just put never on somebody on. I've ever really been able to get into. Really, man, I really love nah. trees and troops and waters, man. I love those. I feel like his well, that's his the projects thing. After that, kind of went down. Dario's, to those Dario two. never liked those. He didn't. He didn't. He wasn't a fan of that either. So yeah, he kind of. You, you don't like those, asleep, man. You're not a Nick fan. Yeah, yeah. No, those I, both. I, both I, of those I never. I've never claimed to be. Yeah. But right. you have you did you see any of the did you at least appreciate any of the the artistry in that because I know like with To Pimp a Butterfly you didn't really dig that album per se but you enjoyed the artistry so did you kind of look I, at, make I the appreciate same? the artistry um, mm-hmm. I don't think he's I don't I don't think he's putting anything on To Pimp a Butterfly's artistry oh no no it's well no in terms no, no. Of, especially it comes to actually rapping and, what you mean but Jenkins <laughs> said only, only nigga that could come for him is Kendrick. I got. I can name about, and I hope that ten you're more. <laughs> so, I, got, I can name about ten more that can come from. But yeah, like um, it's untrue. Watch me debunk yeah, your kung fu. I'm see. I'm man, dropping what, the Mick Jenkins. Bars, that's one right? thing about the the industry right now, man. There's some guys that still that still are some heavyweights in my eyes lyrically. I mean, like your your Dave East or or Nick Grant. Like I, I think there's cats mm. out there, but people just don't want to. They don't focus uh, on see, them. Right. You don't like uh, Darius. Don't like Dave East. Really, man, Davies goes hard, man. Davies is too much for me, man. It's the same. It feels like the same song every. T- it's like insert Davies voice here, and the rhyme scheme's <laughs> never different, bro. Yeah, it's, we'll see it, but I, I think because he's a different type, he's a different type of rapper. So I have to be in the mood scheme, for Dave East, like to listen to it. Like it can't just be Davies playing in the back, like. I just I don't. Oh no, but you know he well he's a, he has that New York grit, man. I mean it's not really background yeah, music, but that's yeah, true. like he got that bite to him, man. So yeah, but I've been know. bumping uh Jesse Reyes. There's like three joints on her project that I, I've been playing a lot. Um, Apple Juice, Dear Dear Yessie, and Imported. Imported's probably my favorite song. Oh man, I'll have to check album. it out. Um. And yeah, the only reason I checked it out is because of uh, her Eminem features on Kam- on a uh, Kamikaze. Is that the mm-hmm. album? Kamikaze. Yeah. So like, she was on I think two songs on that shit, and I was like, "Who the hell is that?" And her voice was amazing, so I had to check out the project. It's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. It's not like out of this world, but she's got those those three tracks that I said are like mm-hmm. definitely worth checking out. Um. Swiss, I listened to briefly. I don't know if it's like all the way out or what's going on, but I think it just released or it's just about to release or something. Yeah, well, there's a Pusha T song on there that's dope, and that's all I really remember off top about that. Tory Lanez, I liked. 
but it's not that amazing. It's just solid. It's, it's, Tory, solid. it's actually a really good effort from Tory Lanez. Solid. But, Tory has never put out a bad project. No. It's just never no, like consistent. amazing. Yeah, he's, he's just consistently good. just good. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, that drip, drip, drip with Meek is is going hard. That's why that's, don't you love me? The intro song. Oh, that's an amazing intro. Like that set up this whole shit like very well. That's the. Vibe. I feel like he's so talented, but it's just something about him that's just never like. I think it's he has like a level of safe to him, man. Like he knows what's going to yeah. get good reception, so he does that mm-hmm. instead of just. And he sounds and he taking. makes songs that sound like uh, you know just what other people's songs might sound like. I just don't think yeah. he's yeah. unique he, enough in his lane for right. everything else. But he's like super talented. Like right, I will he might so, tap into it. That I like it better than my time. I like. Tory's album better than my tie. The um, I do. I Tyler do. Dollar Sign and um, Jeremiah. I'll agree with you there. Collab. So but I still like. I like my tie too, though. Yeah. No, I'm not saying my tie. It's just bad. a solid. They're I both just, just solid projects. Tory's is yeah. just better project. All they got to. They got to take notes from y'all, man. Living life fearless. I mean, I think <laughs> if they seriously though, if, hey, they, if they're a little more fearless, they, more risky. Watch my reactions. I, I, I tell them is there anything they need to do in the music game. Oh, As you yeah. know me, I'm the music connoisseur, so um, yeah. I'll just give some of my quick opinions to some of this stuff, but I obviously listened to a little bit of everything that came out Yeah, uh, that I actually let, like, I mean, all right, off top, that's trash. Quavo Huncho, trash. Ugh. Future Ugh. and Juice World, trash. Um, <laughs> Big Jenkins, trash. Um, <laughs> sincerely to- Made in Toyo, Sincerely Tokyo, just got about two good songs. The rest is trash. What? Um, <laughs> that's funny. I didn't check it. Out, Little so baby and Gunna about two songs. Rest trash. The Drake song. Dom Kennedy, unfortunately, <laughs> not very good. Oh no, that's a just um, Dom Kennedy dropped. Yeah, it's just not very good. Don um, or Dom? Dom. Oh, oh, really? Oh, I missed that. Yeah, well, I guess it's, huh. Khalid Sun City. Yeah, good, very good. Um, oh, Khalid, yeah. There's like three songs on there floating and all the playlists and shit. Action Bronson just had one called White Bronco. It is trash. Not trash. <laughs> just a little disappointing. I was expecting more from his first independent in a while, but hmm. it was lazy effort. So it's, it felt a little lazy. Um Currency Freddie Gribbs and Alchemist Fire. Uh, Fetty, they have a little joint project. Apollo Brown and Joel Ortiz. Mona Lisa got a joint project. Fire. Fire. Oh, what? The Black Eyed Peas, Masters of the Sun, Volume 1, Fire. Uh, for those that don't know, the Black Eyed Peas went back to their hip hop roots. And for those that don't know, yes, they started out as hip hop. Yeah, they were signed to Easy E's Ruthless. <laughs> Darisa, <laughs> Darisa, I haven't checked it out. I'm going to have to check and it out. And they are going, oh, yeah. and it's straight up them back to their old backpack. I'll, uh, alternative backpack hip hop. Is Fergie still in there? No, it's just it's oh, literally okay. the original <laughs> Black Eyed Peas. Like you, you don't get no pop records on here. Straight hip hop. <laughs> um, that's Usher and Zaytoven, surprisingly good. <laughs> it's surprisingly good. He got some songs that. on there. I don't know. He got a couple that. songs on there. I like how y'all disagree on it. Oh, almost every one on this one. Bro, that Usher it's album was so forced. That was the most forced I've ever he, heard. He of got some songs on there. He got some songs on there that you can that you can definitely buy, write to. Yeah, they're made for the club. He did that exactly. It was it, a Usher and Zaytoven. What do you expect from Usher and Zaytoven? I, I expect Usher to like make a good album, not just a money grab album. It was like, it was just like here it's you guys with go. Zaytoven. It's literally songs just for the whip in the I club. Get it. I get it. I just didn't care about it. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, when's the last time you been to the club? Well, it's been a minute, actually. <laughs> exactly. So, of course, it's not going to be there for you. All right. So, those are those. So, the ones that I'm actually listening to on a consistent basis, I'm listening to 21 Pilots Trench. Um, I wasn't sure if I was going to like this one from the singles hmm. as much as I like the last one. But I actually like this one a lot. It's been a pretty consistent rotation for me. Yeah. <clears throat> say Lulu um, you guys might not know they are a indie pop duo I forget out of where but this is their sophomore uh, project called Immortal spelled E-I-M-M-O-R-T-E-L-L-E and it is 
fire as fuck. They're making it hard for us to, to look it up. Yeah, just say Lulu. Say L O U L O U. That I'll is check, the I'll check band them out, like the pop duo. Surprisingly stuff. fucking fire. Indie pop. Super dope. Mm. And T I Dime Trap. Fire. Fire. Uh this is his best <laughs> album in a real long time. What oh, about bro, 15 years? That, that shit is fire, bro. T.I. Yes. got some smart nigga Dime Trap bars is fu- on this it, shit. It, it, People have heavily been sleeping on Dime Trap, but <laughs> listen to me. Don't sleep on this one. He 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 got back in his bag on this one. Yeah. The song slap, uh he actually his bars are on point. He gives you some street stuff, and he gives you the more conscious stuff. Like this is like right grown now. man. This is like grown man Ti. Like this is this is really? what I've been waiting for to blend the two together, and I think he did oh, it. That Meek Mill joint on there, uh, Hefe. Yeah. Play that. Dying trap. Stop sleeping on it. It's fire. Um, and lastly, on some real street. You know, dude, I've been talking about for a while, man. Mozzie, Gangland Landlord, is the project that I've had on repeat for quite a long time now. Mozzie. By way of Northern California, Sacramento to be exact. That was the last one on my list. Yeah, because you said he's from Sacramento. He's from around you. Yeah. I know he's thugging, man. If y'all want to listen to one song, that just listen to Not Impressive. Mozzie, Not Impressive. It's... I'm, It'll I'm make you it down. The I'm putting it down it's right now. So oh sure. yeah, yeah. No, no, Mozzie. Yeah. Oh, okay. I remember. I, must, I did must check listen. out that. No, nah, his shit's lit for sure. I gotta listen. So, listen. No, listen, 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 because he's definitely one of the most underrated flows and lyricists in hip hop, just because he is on that Northern California lingo. But he mm-hmm. he don't rap like E40, bro. Just. No, he no, no, actually exactly. is out there mm. piecing words together like it's and the lingo's incredible. So yeah, definitely right, check man. that out. Oh, actually, no, it's crazy. There's two singles out. I don't even want to mention it, but I will anyway. Nicki Minaj is on the Tiger single, Dip, <laughs> it's fire. <laughs> and Cardi B dropped a single called Money, and it is also pretty fire. Mm. Side note. Oh, yeah, I heard them. Tyga is the comeback artist of the fucking century. This Not guy knows how decade. to come back from L's like nobody's business. Actually, yeah, he's come back time and again. Every time. Again got, and again. Every time you count him out, he comes back with like, another oh, hit. Oh, yeah. Like, we thought he was out of Young Money, then he came back. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, y'all yeah, thought he was done after it? After? Kylie. After Kylie? Nah, he came back with a number one smash on y'all, and it's everywhere. Yeah, I got. Yeah, so he doing his thing. Yeah, hey, say what you want about him. He always finds a way to bounce back somehow, some way. And you gotta appreciate that. And taste, I I can't even lie. Taste is fire. Taste, yeah. Honestly, this (laughs) this single is fire. Like, this is a really good single for Tiger. This dip song with Nicki. Yeah, because it's it's like it's so well arranged because it it has like. Instead of like a double verse, like by each artist, they did like this kind of like extended bridge with Nikki at the end and made it feel like a second verse, which was tight. Right. So I'm just telling y'all, hey, all jokes aside, <laughs> he's actually putting out some fire. <laughs> yeah. So that is it for music that we're currently listening to. Before we get out of here, I'm definitely going to tell you guys, like we always do, the next two weeks of upcoming releases to be on the lookout for starting tomorrow or, yeah. Tomorrow, today, my time. Uh, Action Bronson, White Bronco is officially releasing on this Friday. Uh, Tenacious D, surprisingly, has oh, an shoot. album called Post Apocalypto. The Prodigies has an album called Notorious. Vince Staples just released um, a surprise album oh. called FM. Oh, that's shit. I got it. Oh, I didn't listen to that. Let's check that out definitely for sure. need to check that one out. I have it already loaded yeah, and ready to go. I will have my reaction to that next week. Um, let me see what else is coming out. Oh, no. This is all for November 2nd. So Swiss Beats is dropping Poison tomorrow as well, officially.
What else? Um, they have Takeoff listed as the last rocket, but I don't know if he's actually releasing a project tomorrow or not. But he's listed as November second. Oh, well, he's definitely gonna. Re- he they, he released a solo single. And QC, yeah, but you, does that mean he's gonna drop the project right after? Well, QC's released a project every Friday this month. Yeah, but they built up uh, Quavos for a little bit while before his singles. Yeah, but their artists are, they have a project under them that's come out every week. So, I mean, look, it could come out tomorrow. We'll find out. It hasn't listed right now. It's coming out November 2nd. I haven't seen anything that says it's coming out for sure, but it's listed. Well, we'll see. And then for next Friday, November 9th, um, Imagine Dragons. That's another one. They've they've been putting out way too many, way too fast. Yeah, that's not good. Oh, they've been losing. It's, you can tell. They, yeah, it's <laughs> way too many, way too fast. But they have another one coming out, Origins. Hmm. Little Peep is they're releasing his posthumous release, Come Over When You're Sober Part 2. Muse hmm. Simulation Theory is finally being released. Um, let me see what else is coming out. These are all again for November 9th, so next Friday. Jeff Goldblum's? Jeff Gold, not Blooms, Jeff Goldblum has some sort of record coming out called the Capitol Studio Sessions. Mm. Huh. Okay. For those that don't know Jeff Goldblum, uh, you know, Jurassic Park 2, I believe. Was it two or was it one? I think it's two. Independence Day. You know, just oh, YouTube yeah. him. Yeah. He's a character for sure. So <laughs> he's got something coming out November night. That's so weird. That is it. That is it for new releases um, over these next two weeks. And that is it for this week's show of Music Files. Again, today's day was November 1st, 2018. Yeah. Shit got real, man. This was a real dense podcast. We hit on some real, uh, some real topics and really went in. Uh, yeah. So, I want to thank Jaron, of course, for joining us once again. Always good to have you on here. Always yeah. a good conversation. I appreciate both of y'all, brothers, man, giving me opportunity to get on here and uh, fellowship and talk about deep topics. Uh, definitely was enlightened. I got a few things. I got to go back to the drawing board and. Uh, study i got i got some new music to check out and check out you know some other things going on in my industry so much much love mm-hmm. to y'all man and uh if you haven't list heard his album yet by now you definitely need to go ahead and listen to that one it's still listed in our posts on live my fearless and it's also on your website and you want to yes. you want to give everybody just your information real quick yeah um y'all can find me uh i'm on uh, instagram at drums Hoops twenty three. That's uh, D R U M S. Hoops H O O P S. The number twenty three. Um, my website is my my artist name. That's Jaron Lamar Davis dot com. I'm also on Facebook under Jaron Lamar Davis. Uh, so uh, we will have all up. this also in the descriptions. So yes definitely hit me up i I'm, I'm good about engagement and reaching back out and looking to build new fans uh so let me know after you check out the album what you think yep definitely check it out um we will definitely have you on again here soon probably mm-hmm. you know to talk about more stuff you got in the works <laughs> and and you know you always welcome to join us just to chop it up about music because that's what we love to do oh man i appreciate that i'm a music lover too on top of artists so Definitely appreciate you guys. And, uh, yeah, so thank you guys for listening. Uh, again, if any of these topics, please, please leave comments. Please, you know, email us, tell us, ask us questions. We love the engagement with you guys. You can do that anywhere this goes up, either on YouTube, our website, SoundCloud, wherever we post it. It's also on iTunes. Pretty much everybody, everywhere except for Spotify at the moment. Um, so wherever that goes up, yeah, definitely leave comments and engage with us. We love we love to hear from you guys. But thanks again for listening. Um, mm-hmm. 
we'll be back shortly. Next week, we'll be back with the Fear of the Show. And then the week after that, we'll be back with another episode of Music Files. So, do what, Darius? Keep living life fearless, y'all. Yes, sir. Yeah. We will be back shortly. Catch y'all soon. Peace.